In my previous video, I was telling some ghost stories and a few of you wanted to hear some more and I probably have far too many, but I picked a few to tell you today. This first one is called Get Home Safe. I was once driving from my parents' house back to my own when I saw this Halloween decoration hanging from a tree outside of a house on the side of the road. It was a Grim Reaper. I was kind of far away from the house when I first saw it, I was waiting at a roundabout, but the odd part was this was August, but I thought maybe this person is just having like a spooky house party or birthday party, and I was actually thinking of Robert Welsh. He tells ghost stories and they're awesome, him and his twin, I adore them, go and check them out. But I thought, well, maybe this person just likes spooky things even in the summer. I knew that I'd be driving up past the house at some stage, and I was kind of looking forward to seeing what other decorations they had, because the Grim Reaper, it looked pretty spooky. It looked like it was barely attached to the tree, it was flowing in the wind even though it was quite a still evening, and had this almost dark glow around it. It was pretty cool. So I came up around the roundabout and I got a little bit closer to the house and the car in front of me stopped to turn off in the other direction. So I slowed down, I checked my mirrors, took my eyes off the Grim Reaper, and then I slowly started driving towards the spooky house party home. But it was gone. I slowed down and I wondered maybe it had fallen? Nothing. The house was empty, the area around the trees was completely clear. Whatever I had seen was never really there. Now, when I tell you I drove home so carefully, I mean it. I was so careful, and I'm already a very careful driver, but I was not going to take any chances. Now, I honestly think this was just some sort of a strange trick of the light, maybe the wind moving in a weird way, but whatever I saw, I didn't want to jinx. Now, thankfully, my drive home was very uneventful, but I was really happy to be home. Now here's my question to you. Have you ever seen something and taken it as a warning? Or would you have just laughed this off? This next story is the figure in the mask. So this happened a few years ago. My sister was staying with me and that first night she stayed up a little bit and I went to bed early. When I walked into my bedroom, it felt very cold. So I went back to her and I told her, I'm putting the heater on in your room, but just make sure you turn it off before you go to sleep. I decided to leave my bedroom door open just a little bit, just in case I heard her and I could remind her to turn the heater off. But I fell asleep really quickly. I was woken up by somebody leaning over me. And I assumed this was my sister. We would fake being asleep and then jump up and say boo a lot. So I assumed my sister was checking if I was asleep or faking it. So I kept my eyes closed and I kind of acted like I hadn't woken up. She stepped away and I opened my eyes and sat up in the bed and I was kind of about to say boo to her. And the room was completely dark except for the light that was floating in from the hallway. And there's my sister standing in the door frame, wearing this grotesque, spooky Halloween mask. And she's just dancing from side to side. I remember I had a lot of thoughts within a few seconds. One, where had she gotten this mask from? It was really gross and scary. And two, how long had she been planning this? Because she must have brought this mask with her. Now me and my sister, we do silly things sometimes. For example, I put a toy penguin in her room sometimes and I have him do silly things like reading a book or trying on clothes. I even put a shower cap on him once and had him standing in the shower. Just really silly, silly pranks. But this kind of scared me. At first, the dance wasn't a big deal. It was just back and forth, but she wasn't saying anything. So I pulled the blankets over my head to kind of cover my face. And I was like, what are you doing? My sister replied, oh, I'm going to bed in a minute. Except her voice wasn't muffled like it would be if she was wearing a mask. And her voice wasn't coming from the door frame. It was coming from down the hall. I pulled the covers back down and I could still see this figure standing there. It wasn't my sister and they weren't dancing anymore. They suddenly stared at me and jumped. And I remember I put my hands up expecting it to hit me, but nothing just disappeared. I think it was just a waking nightmare of some sort. At least I hope it was. This next one doesn't have a name because it doesn't feel appropriate, but it's a story of a captured memory for just the timestamp purpose. This might be a little bit uncomfortable for some people, but I think it's kind of beautiful in a way, so I, I hope it doesn't offend. I used to work putting frames on photos and artwork, and I've done this in a few different places. One day, my boss hands me a frame and a photo, and she says she just wants to watch me work, kind of as a quality control type thing. I've done this so many times at this stage, so I wasn't really thinking too much of it. I start putting the frame together, cleaning it up, and then I slip the photo out of the envelope. And I remember this photo just seemed different. It kind of gave me pause. My boss was watching me and she said, have you figured it out? 
and I looked at the photo of this lovely smiling lady. It was a candid shot and it looked like it had been taken at a wedding. And I'll always remember it because it was the first time this has ever happened to me. But there was just something really different about this photo. And I looked at my boss and I asked, has this person passed away? And my boss explained that with all the photos that we see, some people have the ability to know if the person in the photo has since passed. And it's important because customers come in to collect these items and we always like to show them before we pack them up. But when it comes to frames of loved ones who have passed, we always like to bring them off to the side, to a quiet side of the store, just to give them a minute because it can be emotional for them. And some might even not want to look at it until they've left the store, which is something we don't usually do because we need customers to sign off on the item to make sure it's correct before they leave. But we always make exceptions for some people. And my boss wanted to see if I could tell so I could be extra careful. And I'm not sure what it is. I'm not sure I can explain it. But the way that I feel about it is that we all have an energy. And energy cannot be destroyed. It can only take on a new form. And maybe that's a memory or a captured memory in a photograph, perhaps. And I kind of think that's, that's really beautiful. So after that, I was very careful. Anytime I would get that feeling that this photo meant something, that it was a captured memory that someone needed just to hold on to somebody a little bit longer. Now I have a few follow-ups from my previous video. A few people suggested that I should sage my house. The thing is, I don't mind some of the, I guess, ghostly stuff, if that's what's happening. I, I don't mind it too much. For instance, there's this one nice thing, and this sounds really silly, but I have an air freshener. And this air freshener is meant to have a motion detector on it. And one thing about me is that scent just cheers me up. And I love this air freshener, but it's broken. However, it will always somehow randomly spray on the days when I am sad or stressed out. And me and David, we joke that it's haunted by a friendly ghost who wants to cheer me up. But there are a few things that I don't like. For instance, we have a guest bathroom and it's right where that man was standing that I talked about in my previous video. And the lock to that bathroom is always breaking. And I had to actually leave a screwdriver in that bathroom because people were constantly getting locked in. And in the end, I just removed the lock. But a few times I will be in there and I'll be just cleaning and the door handle will just start shaking as if somebody's trying to open it. Now, the first time this happened, I grabbed that handle and put my full weight on that door because I really thought somebody had just broken in. And it's happened a few times since I'm kind of used to it it freaks me out for a few minutes and then i'm like okay it's fine there's another odd thing that's also happened i was stacking blankets and cushions onto a shelf in the hall and you know when you stack stuff that are soft they sometimes almost fall like a slinky so i had taken a few attempts to get them to all stack up and stay on the shelf without falling so i managed to do it and i turn around and that's when i get a message and this part's hard to explain but i feel this pressure on my back and i just assume oh all of the things I put on the shelf are falling down. So I lean to push them against the shelf so they don't fall on the floor. And I read and reply to my message the whole time leaning against this wall of fallen blankets and pillows. Once I reply to my message, I put my hand behind me to kind of catch the blankets and I start to turn into the blankets. And that's when I realized that I was leaning against nothing. This pressure that I was feeling on my back just disappeared and that is when I just fell backwards into the shelving unit. So here's my question. If I cleanse my house, will the air freshener ghost go as well? Because I kind of don't mind them. I just want all the other spooky things to go. And as always, my friends, be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and I'll see you in a video really soon.